All right, everybody, another Survivor video, week 12. Let's get to it. Gonna say it again like I do every video. If you're enjoying it, definitely like the video, comment, let me know what you're picking, or ask for some help, and definitely subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. Looking at the potential picks for week 12 here, a lot on the board here. A few handful of teams that are favored, you know, by less than a field goal or close to a field goal. Handful of teams favored by two scores and more. So a lot of options here. But as we're getting longer and longer into the season, your options become limited um, as each week goes by. So we're going to do our best to talk about each and one, each and every one of these teams here. Because more and more prevalent as the weeks go by, take a look at the schedule. Uh, to see what teams you can always have in your back pocket. For instance, 49ers, while they're in a great spot this week, you're always going to be able to take them later in the season as they got some great opponents for a survivor matchup later. Doesn't mean you shouldn't take them now, but definitely means you should consider that when making your pick. Starting out, proceed with caution. Going to start with the team in the bottom of the list, and that's the Jaguars at the Texans here. Uh, Jaguars, only one and a half point favorites. They are coming off um, another loss there. You know, they lost the 49ers, who didn't look too great. And the Texans, they look pretty good. They've beaten the Bengals. They just beat the Cardinals in a game that maybe um, was closer than people thought. But, um, I'm sorry, the Jaguars beat the Titans, actually, in convincing fashion. Um, and they're, and then the Texans are also rolling. I was honestly a little bit surprised to see the Jaguars, only one-and-a-half-point favorites here. think they have a little bit more of the edge than the Texans, certainly from a veteran standpoint and just st stature in the league from – Number one, their quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, but a lot of their team is has much more experience than the Texans. What makes it really scary is that they're on the road against the divisional opponent, um, and that is situations that we see all the time where teams struggle, even as favorites, uh, even when the team's favored by much more than one and a half points. One and a half points on the road is basically a pick'em game here, so they're saying this Jaguars Texans game is a coin flip, and that is reason to be um, extremely cautious. I do believe the Jaguars will win this game. I think they are the veteran team uh, with better quarterback, although that is close with how well C.J. Stroud is playing, but a more complete team and a more complete defense. I like the Jaguars here um, to kind of stifle the Texans and put them in their place a little bit this week. I said it last week, I think the Texans are due for a loss, and I think it's coming this week. But nevertheless, that doesn't negate the fact that this is a scary game and really a coin flip pick -em game in the eyes of the odds makers. Another video, another game to talk about here, Vikings at the Bears. Also surprised to only see them favored by three and a half points here. Primetime game against a divisional opponent on the road. Similar situation to the Jaguars and Texans. Although this time, you know, Josh Dobbs, who's been looking really good at quarterback. Uh, the Vikings lost against the Broncos in a pretty close game. The Bears competed, which is all you can really ask, ask from them at this point, but ended up blowing the lead in the fourth quarter against the Lions. I think the Bears are going to come out and play and, you know, have some fire to them, just like they did against the Lions. Will that defense be enough to hold back a comeback from the Vikings? That's yet to be seen, and based on their track record, the answer is no. But that being said, this does seem like a game where it's, you know, there's value in picking the Vikings here based on their remaining schedule, but it's certainly scary. Again, primetime game, on the road, divisional opponent. The Bears got their pride on the line here um, after really should have having beaten the Lions then letting that one slip. I have a feeling they're going to come out ready to play here. The Vikings should be getting Justin Jefferson back. We'll see. And that definitely adds a new wrinkle to this game. Keep an eye on Justin Jefferson, star wide receiver for the Vikings, and his status for this game, as that will make a huge impact. But with if he does not play, I would expect the Bears to hang around in this game and probably a little too close for comfort again for people taking the survivor game against the Bears. Final one we were going to talk about for perceived caution. And this one, I think I'm going to get a lot of people, maybe in the comment section, tell me I'm wrong. A lot of criticism for this one. I am scared of the Ravens going at the Chargers here. While they are coming off um, a Thursday night win, have a long week, they lost their star tight end, Mark Andrews, who was their number one option in the receiving game for Lamar Jackson. While they do have Zay Flowers, who's a rookie wide receiver, who's been stepping up big time, and Odell Beckham Jr. last game, still concerns me a little bit. What really concerns me is the situation more than anything else. The Chargers, who had a brutal loss, a back-breaking loss against the Lions, another one against the Packers on the road, get to come home and try to get a win and salvage their season. I think if they lose this game, Brandon Staley gets fired very soon thereafter. 
So this is a Chargers team that's extremely desperate, and that's certainly something you don't want to be going against when you're taking your survivor picks. Ravens, better team by a mile, without a doubt. But this Chargers team has a really bad taste in their mouth after the last two weeks. I would imagine them to come out swinging, like just like I said, the Bears were. But even more so, because this Chargers team is one that had, and maybe still has, playoff hopes. So they're certainly fighting for that. The Ravens starting to run away with their division, maybe looking past this game. I am certainly concerned about the Ravens, and I will not be surprised at all if the Chargers win this game. Uh, I just can't get behind this one. The best pick for the week is going to go against my traditional uh, beliefs and just hot my philosophy in picking Survivor, and that's taking the Chiefs on the road against the divisional opponent as my best pick. Chiefs coming off a really tough loss against the Eagles in a game you could, really could argue they should have won for a variety of reasons. Regardless, they're trying to get another W in the win column here on the road against the Raiders after a short week playing Monday night, which I'm not too concerned about given the Chiefs, Andy Reid, and Patrick Mahomes' dominance in this AFC West division throughout his entire stint and entire career in Kansas City. Chiefs have one of the best Defense in terms of points per game allowed right up there with the Ravens. Offense is going to hum no matter what. They're going to find ways to win. Isaiah Pacheco has really stepped up at running back. Obviously, you have Travis Kelsey at tight end. And then receivers, Rasheed Rice, Justin Watson, names that you probably didn't know before the season, still might not know now, but those guys have been stepping up and helping the Chiefs too. I just think there's very few times the Chiefs lose two games in a row, especially now that the Broncos are starting to compete for this division. You know, they're not going to want to let up any slack there. They're still competing for the one seed in the AFC. And two, I don't think the Chiefs lose back to that game against a vastly inferior divisional opponent, even on the road. Talking about some value, just another clarification is people always ask, the value does not mean this is the second best pick or seven, second safest pick. It just means this is a team that if you're really trying to zig what everyone else zags and play for the long term, this is a good pick because the team we're talking about, you probably won't be picking again. That was the commanders last week. You can't pick him again because if you did, you lost. But there's a situation where you would never pick the commanders and they would never be favored by 10 points again. So that's where the value was. And that situation comes with the Titans this week. This is a team that has three wins. Very seldom is a team with three wins this far in the season on your Survivor League radar. But that's just what happens when they're playing the Panthers at home and the Panthers have one win season to date. So the fact that they have the opponent at home, the opponent that is the worst amount, the worst record in the NFL at home, really helps you out there. You look at the schedule for Tennessee the rest of the season, divisional opponent at home, Playoff team in Miami on the road, divisional opponent home, playoff team in Seattle, divisional opponent on the road, divisional opponent. You know, we want to stay away from divisional opponents, especially because all these divisional opponents have better records than the Titans. And it starts to get a little scary there. You're not going to get many teams, there's very few teams in the league that have a worse record than Titans. And that just creates a great matchup in terms of potential survivor pick. So a ton of value there, T certainly a ton of, ton of risk. You can see the odds to win 65 and a half or 65.8%, where some of these teams are upward of 80%, but that does not negate the fact that you will not pick the Titans again for the rest of the season, barring any change. And so if you're trying to get bold, Titans could be a pick for you. Looking at great value, a lot of value here, and much safer is the Cowboys at home against the Commanders, 10.5 point favorites. I am a little concerned because it is against a divisional opponent, and we just saw the Commanders in the same situation. They were at home. They were facing a divisional opponent, the Giants. They were favored by 10 points, and they lost straight up. Now, this Cowboys team is much better than the Commanders. Their offense seems to be clicking on all cylinders. Same with the defense. And probably isn't too much concern for you in terms of losing. Probably a safe pick, but I love it because you're really not going to pick the Cowboys too many more times this season. Looking at their schedule, again, playoff team in Seattle and Philadelphia, Buffalo and Miami, and Detroit, and then finally on the road against the divisional opponent. So pretty tough schedule for the Cowboys, and certainly tough for Survivor League. I think this is the last time, and maybe until week 18, if that, you're taking the Cowboys, especially with this much cushion of safety. Knowing that, I think it's a great time to take them. And then finally, some good value here, Packers and Lions. Lions coming off a squeaky win, and the Packers coming off a nice win against the Chargers. 
I don't think the Packers are in the same league as the Lions. While it is a divisional game that scares me, you know, be wary of it. Still good value. Certainly not as great as the Cowboys or the Titans, but you're getting a team in the Lions that's favored by seven and a half points. Not a ton of uh, traction in the rest of their schedule. And I don't think the Packers and Jordan Love on offense would really be able to compete with what the Lions can do. If Jared Goff doesn't throw three interceptions like the Lions did Sunday against the Bears, then I think it should be fine in this situation here. Talking about the other picks, you know, the Dolphins, again, divisional opponent on the road, lots of divisional games this week, hard to avoid them. You know, the Jets are going to be starting Tim Boyle, the quarterback. It's hard to see the Dolphins losing against them, even with the injury to Tyreek Hill. You know, I think other games that are favored by 10 points, this is the worst one to take, but sometimes you don't have that option. So if you do have the Jets and you're looking for a safe pick and you don't have the Chiefs or Cowboys, I, I think that's fine, but you still should be wary that even with Tim Boyle, quarterback, I can't imagine the Jets and that offensive line winning, but the Dolphins will not have Tyreek Hill with that hand injury. Niners, Seahawks, this is the primetime game on Thursday. Not a lot of time to prepare for either one of these teams. I think that lends itself to being a closer game more times than not, just with uh, raw physicality and talent being put in the field. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that the 49ers are more talented than the Seahawks, but like I talked about throughout this video and throughout the lifetime of this channel, divisional road games, scary, especially I think with teams with you know run heavy offenses, not a ton of big plays from either team. Every now and then they will, but these teams certainly want to rely on the run game, both of them. If the opposing run defense come to play, this game might be closer than you like. I think there are better opportunities to take the Seahawks in the near future, given how great they are, given their schedule, and probably taking them while they're at home. And then we talked about the Ravens Chargers. Just want to reiterate that I think this game looks enticing on paper, given how great the Ravens have been and how poor the Chargers have played this season. I really do think this is a trap game. To recap, just want to one more time, Chargers, I do think they really have a chance to beat the Ravens here, and I suggest staying away. That's just my hunch. You can take whatever you want, but I have a bad feeling about that one for some reason, given how desperate the Chargers are getting with their playoff situation and their head coach. I think the Chiefs, even though they're on the road, divisional opponent, Andy Reid, Patrick Holmes aren't going to lose two games in a row. They're going to keep putting the pressure on this AFC West as they've done throughout the entire stint of their duo and tenure together since 2016. I think the Raiders Chiefs keep it going while the Raiders keep falling flat. A lot of value with the Titans here, playing the worst team in the league in the Panthers at home. You're never going to think about taking the Titans again this season. So that's something, especially if you have two picks, that might be something you consider. Cowboys, a lot of value and much safer than Titans. You can see just in the percentage difference of the odds to win. And they're playing in the middle game on Thursday. So that's something to keep in mind as they're facing their uh, division opponents on a shorter week. And then Lions too, divisional opponent, shorter week. So even less value than the Cowboys, but still favored by a touchdown. You should be safe there and not a ton of times to take them either. As always, let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Always happy to provide my insights. But at the end of the day, it's your pick and you go with your gut. Uh, better to go with what you're thinking than listen to someone else and lose. So go with your gut. I'm only here to help guide you. Best of luck in week 12.